Okay, good morning, everybody. Everyone's having a wonderful day. Today is a special day. It's a fast day. Those that are observing it is the beginning of a period of time called the three weeks, which is a time in which you remember the destruction of the temple. We try to position ourselves in a way that is a little more introspective, to yearn for more. This period of time is very much connected to, to yearning for a greater life. Give me one second. We're talking a lot about this idea of rituals of getting ready to do something that's bigger than ourselves and along the way there is an emotion around it there's an emotion around change whenever we're about to accomplish something our brain is unfamiliar with it and as soon as that happens all the neuroplasticity that has to get changed starts to come up and saying well what are we doing this is not how we do things that's not how things work and so when we really talk about changing our lives, when we talk about implementing rituals, what we've been trying to go through is this idea of there's an emotion connected to it. I got a question during the week about hitting a wall. Hitting a wall isn't necessarily a physical activity. I remember one time running a very long race. I ran a marathon once. And I remember they tell you you're going to hit the wall. And it was, I think I was supposed to hit the wall. I think marathon is 26.2. I was expecting to hit the wall at like 23. I think I hit the wall at like 21. Like I, I remember being like, you know, crossing the, the crossing into the, the city and there's like five miles left and thinking like, I got nothing left, like nothing. It was, it was insane. I was like, scanning the crowd to see if anyone had like bananas or something that I could consume because I was out. Everything I brought with me was finished. I was out. Was I really out or was I not out? If you would go into my brain, it would be like, you would see like, eh, eh, eh. It'd be like a code red. There'd be like little firefighters going down the poles. It'd be like a disaster. But I had five miles left and I wasn't giving up, especially because in two miles, I could see my family who've been waiting there for like three hours to see me for like 10 seconds. And they came all the way from Long Island on a train to wait on a block for like four hours. You think I was gonna like roll into that, like walking? So and almost my family, almost my family, almost my family, almost my family. It's almost over, it's almost over, it's almost over. When we hit a wall in life, are we actually hitting the wall? Or, or, or what we're hitting is this mental protection we have of ourselves. Like I said, today's a fast day. The fast is over on sundown or you know nightfall. That's like at 9.15. It's 100 degrees outside. If I would ask anybody just to like stop eating for like 13, 15 hours, I can't do that. Can you? Or can't you? This is where we're at. And so when we approach life with this perspective of I don't know, and that's okay, we open up the door of possibility. But here's, where, here's the next piece along this line. When we realize that we don't know who we are, and the only way to know who we are is through going through things we haven't done before. That then means that the only way in which we bring out who we are is through things that are unknown and usually challenging. The challenges that we face in our lives aren't the detours of who we can be. They are the pathways of who we can be. You know, there's a great like expression that everyone's talking about, like life begins outside your comfort zone. Or what, what, what does that mean? Like, it sounds great, but like, what does it actually mean? So 
we're getting there. We're, we're, we're moving down the road to fully understanding what that means. In that if I am not out of my comfort zone on a consistent basis, then I am unsure as to what the extent that I can do. Because I don't know what I can do. I'll never figure it out intellectually. I'll never get to a place and go, that's what I can do. Looking backwards isn't going to help. Maybe I can put pieces together. Maybe I can put a puzzle together and saying, I failed at this and I succeeded at this. I should do more of this and not. Fine. That's great. That's the journey of life and getting smarter and iterating. That's the rapid iteration of our own lives. Every day going out and doing the best we can and then iterating. Don't do it that way. Don't do it that way. When you feel this, you mean this. That's called life. But at the end of the day, as you go through your past, there's still levels you haven't reached because you haven't experienced it yet. So the only way we're going to really know who we are is through experience. But the only way we can really tap into the depths of who we are is through experiences that are not the same experiences we had yesterday with different details. If all I'm doing today is what I did yesterday with just a little bit of a different fact pattern, then have I really delved into who I could be? If my marriage is exactly the same year after year, have I really explored the depths of how I can be a spouse? If my relationship to God, if my relationship to my employees, if my relationship to myself, if what I am doing mimics what I've done, then am I really growing? That's where I think we feel this emptiness. There's like a sense that many of us have of like, like everything is great, but why do I feel empty? Everything is great, but why don't I feel satisfied? Like everything is great, but how come I don't feel like I'm living the life I'm supposed to live? It's not because the things in front of you are a problem. It's because of our relationship to the things in front of us that's the problem. Because our soul is clamoring for growth. Can you imagine being sitting in a in a in a, for a brand new Ferrari, and the or or some custom built sports car and the man who builds it or the woman who builds it gives it to you as a gift and you're like wow it's amazing and you're going like 52 in the middle of the city start and stop start and stop and every day and the person's going i built you a sports car you imagine sitting in an f-16 and all we're doing is driving 30 miles down the runway the creator of this, it seems like, are you crazy? You know what this thing could do? This baby can fly. There's this sense that we have that we can fly. There's this sense that we walk around with, that we can, we can live a certain life. We can feel fulfilled at a deep level. And the world around us usually is trying to keep us comfortable. Most of what we're seeing every day are just new ways to feel comfortable. That's the products that are being sold. That's the life that we're being sold is stay, even when we, even when we talk about our dreams, I want to work for what? Because I want to be comfortable. We say those words. I want my kids to be comfortable. When we offer people a higher upgrade in a plane, all we're giving them is just a little bit more comfort. So much of what we're hearing is this drive to comfort. So much of what we are reacting to, so much of what the neuroplastic brain that we have is things that make us uncomfortable. We hate conversations where we're uncomfortable. We hate doing things to our body that are uncomfortable. We hate making decisions that are uncomfortable. I don't want to call that person and ask for that thing. Why? Because I'm going to be uncomfortable. So much of what we have conditioned ourselves to think is success is really just comfort. And when we buy it, and we all do because that's how we live our lives. When we buy into that, what we're doing is going on this merry-go-round where life is good, but we sense that it can be great. And we don't know where the disconnect is. 
We don't know what's wrong because we're trained to look at the surface of everything and say, well, if, it's, if I don't feel good with this person or with this job or with this thing, it must be a problem in them because I'm fine. What's wrong with me? I'm not feeling it. They're not delivering for it. I've got a child that recently lost a, a, an electronic that he loves and he's looking for it. And at some point, like he turns up and he's like, like mad at God. I'm like, why are you mad at God for? He's like, he made me lose it. I'm like, really? No, what am I going to do? He's connect. It's a complicated area. I'm like, you're upset at God for not finding your DS. And I realized that at some point he was so upset with himself that he needed to project the frustration on something else. And there was nobody in the family to blame. So you know the greatest person to blame is God. When a bunch of people are doing bad things with the free will that God gave them, you know what we can do? Let's just blame God for not stepping up and zapping them before they were going to do something bad. God's an easy one because he'll take it on the chin for us. But it's a projection. It's a projection of this this inability to recognize that we're not done yet and we've got a long way to go and not from a place of being a defeatist. Not from a place of feeling bad for ourselves, but from a place of recognizing that the only path that I have to finding the real me, so to speak, is when I challenge myself. Greatness is the product of deliberate discomfort. When I'm constantly putting myself in positions of being uncomfortable. Hold on, can't just. <laughs> can't, yeah, I'll have. We're we're going on a uh, on a scavenger hunt for this this kid's DS. So we'll we'll look for your mask, Ken. This idea that I need to be constantly this uncomfortable is so antithetical to what we feel. Yeah, we get it mentally. We love saying that line. Every two days on some meme, someone posts that somewhere with a great picture of like a cliff of some incredible scene that we may or may not ever see. But do we feel it here? Do we wake up in the morning and go, how can I place myself in a position of being uncomfortable today? So what happens to us is that because we don't do what's called micro discomfort, we're not putting ourselves in micro bits of discomfort on a regular basis. We, we find ourselves unsatisfied with the things that we have, unsatisfied with the rituals that we've put in our lives, reinforcing bad habits for years that only make it harder to break. Creating mediocrity in our relationships, in our, in our careers, which only make it harder than make up for. And then we assume that we need some like macro big change. When all change really is micro, because all change is neuroplastic and all neuroplasticity is micro. There are moments of highs and lows there are moments of peak experiences and there are moments of huge lows, of course, but life is not constantly peaks and valleys. Life is the slow, consistent growth of getting better every single day. And the way we do that is through rituals and the emotion that comes to block us, the wall that we hit is not almost is not usually a physical wall. We can run the extra three or four miles. We can go longer without eating for a few hours. We can say the words we're about. It's this mental fence that we've placed around ourselves that is constantly there to protect ourselves. We have built an internal mechanism to enable us to always be comfortable. Now, there's some survival in that because if you're comfortable, you're not pushing yourself, it's, it helps us survive. 
always being comfortable helps us survive and survival is our default. Remember, greatness is the override system. So comfort is definitely part of our survival. But that's where the breach in the wall has to be. We have to recognize that when we tell ourselves that we can't, when we start to change the language to why can't I, we have to realize that what's going to come down the path, what we're up against is an internal defense mechanism that we've put into our systems, that the culture around us is feeding us. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm not blaming society. I'm just stating what I believe it gives us. It gives us a lot of good things. One of the things that it gives us is this pursuit of comfort. And unless, that we're, unless we're aware of it, and unless we can't call it out, we can't get past it. When we hit a wall, we need to understand that the wall that we're most always hitting, of course, you have to be safe. You have to be normal. I'm not saying you just like put on this cape and jump off a building. The wall that me and you feel like we're hitting, I'm too tired. I can't do it. It's too hard. I'm exhausted. They're never going to believe me. They're not going to like it. All that stuff. If we don't call it out for what it is, we can't get past it. If it still stays in the domain of them, it's not our problem. But once we put it into the domain of, it's not about what they react to. It's not whether or not they like us. It's on me. It's whether or not I'm willing to push it. It's whether or not I'm willing to go and get to a place where I can go beyond myself. I told you the story with that girl that made the call to her dad. I did a seminar a year ago, a bunch, a long time ago. We spoke about making the calls to your family, telling them how they, they, you feel about them in a real way. We being authentic to your loved ones. And a girl called her father. I think I said this here. Very tough, difficult relationship. And she said that she loved her father and her father hung up the phone on her in front of everybody. She's telling the story. And I asked her and I said to her, like, are you okay? How do you feel? And in front of everybody, she goes, I feel amazing. I said, why do you feel amazing for your father's hung up with you? She goes, you know, me and my father had a tough relationship our whole lives. And I've always felt like it was me. And I felt realized today that I picked up the phone to call him to apologize. It, it, it was the hardest thing I ever did in my whole life. Cause he did a lot of bad things to me growing up to go above and beyond as the daughter to call the father. And my hands were shaking when I picked up that phone and I called him and I apologized to him and he hung up on me. I feel like I'm doing my part. I feel like I've broken my wall. Regardless of what the response is, I want a relationship with my dad. But my job, my part, are we doing our parts? Are we doing our parts for our clients and giving them more value than they're asking for? Are we doing our parts for our families? And every situation is different. Every situation has their own dynamics. But part of what we have to ask ourselves as we build these rituals and as the rituals hit walls, as we hit the wall in our ritual, as it gets too hard, we have to ask ourselves, I can't or I'm just so used to being comfortable in this area that it's not just what to do that I have to work on. It's the powering through that I can do it even when it gets hard. Because the mechanism around me that I've built is the mechanism of comfort. And greatness requires discomfort. Just understanding where the comfort traps are in our brains and being able to go after them can free us of so much potential that we have. We're going to continue this. Tomorrow we have a Q&A. So get your questions in as 
as, as you like. And tomorrow we're going to address, just send them to me at charlie at charlieyard.com. We'll do questions tomorrow. Um, for those that are out there fast today, you should have an easy fast. This is, as Rochelle said, this is laziness. Excellent. That's exactly right. Have an incredible day. Think about this today. When you hit a wall today, wherever, wherever you are, when you hit a wall, ask yourself, is it really a wall? Or is it just my comfort that I'm hitting? Because just by asking that question, may be able to open up a new area for us to walk through or really to crawl through, to be more honest. Okay, have an incredible day. And uh, with God's help, I look forward to speaking again tomorrow.